lesson based on learners. This is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher. So this will be the last video lesson for week number six. So at the end of this video lesson, you should be able to find solution and explanation to answer problems involving sampling distribution of the sample means, applying the central limit theorem. So let's have example number one. Imagine that you are doing a research from a population of um, size of 200 with a population mean of mu is equal to 75 and a standard deviation of sigma equals 14. So you decided to use a sample size of n equals 35. So that guarantees a central limit theorem because our sample size is greater than 30. Now, what do you think is the probability that the mean of the average or average of your sample will be 79 or more? So to answer that question, let us write first the given. So this is how you are also going to show your solutions on your outputs. So for the given, we have the population size n equals 200. We have the population mean mu, 75. We have um, sigma, which is 14, which is the population standard deviation. We have n equals 35, which is our population size. And our um, x, which is 79. And to represent 79 or more, this is how that graph would look like. So mu is 75, so you locate it on the middle and then locate our raw score x, which is 79. So a 79 or more means greater than. So we shade this part of the distribution. Okay, so look at the blue shaded part. We shaded the right side. And so, since the population is finite, then we use this formula. Sigma sub x bar is equal to sigma over the square root of n times the population correction factor capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1. Substituting the values, we have 14 over the square root of 35 times the square root of 200 minus 35 over 200 minus 1. Computing for the value, the final value, so you can put on the calculator straight using scientific calculator, and you will get 2.15. So you round it off to two decimal places. Next, we convert the x to a z-score. So we use this one. Z is equal to um, x bar minus mu over sigma sub x bar. So we have 79 minus 75 over 2.15. So that the answer, the z-score is 1.86. Then we look that value, the z-score, on the z-table. So get your z-tables. And we are looking for the value when z is equal to 1.86. And you should get 0 0.4686. That's the area. Did you see it on the z-table? Great. Now. The probability of Z, this is our probability notation, is greater than or equal to 79, is equal to, obviously, our operation is to subtract from half of the area. So that's 0.5 minus the area when Z is 1.86 from 0 to 79. So we subtract it. So the answer is 0 0.01, 0 0.0314, I mean. So therefore, the probability that the sample you obtain will have an average of 79 or more or greater um, is 3.14%. So that's a very small probability on it that you will get 79 or more. Now let's talk about the second example. According to a study, the average number of hours of TV viewing per household per week in the Philippines is 50.4 hours. That's weekly, okay? 
And the SAR deviation is 11.8 hours. So try to imagine how addicted Filipinos in watching different series. Okay? So if a random sample is of 42 households is taken, what is the probability that the sample average is less than 2 hours? To answer that, the given R, mu is 50.4, so it's encircled in red. I hope you see it. Our sigma, or the population standard deviation, is 11.8 hours. Our N is 42. And our raw score is 52. So notice that in this given problem, we have an infinite population because the population size is not given. So we will be using a different formula on that. Now, let us represent it on the normal curve. So first, you locate the center. That is the um, population mean mu. That is 50.4. Then we locate the raw score 52. And since it is less than 52 hours, we shade the left side because less than means left. Okay, so that is how it would look like. So our probability notation is the probability of X is less than 52. So to answer that, let us compute for the um, sigma sub X bar when the population is infinite. So the formula is sigma over the square root of N. It's very simple. Substitute 11.8 for sigma and the square root of 42 for the denominator. So when you use the scientific calculator, it will give you 1.82. Let us convert it on um, the X score into a Z score. So Z is equal to X bar minus mu over sigma sub X bar. So um, substitute it, 52 minus 50.4 divided by 1.82. So the final answer is 0 0.88. So we will look now Z, which is equal to 0 0.88 on the Z table. Okay, get now your Z table and look at 0 0.8 and then um, you have to correspond it to 0 0.08. So, when Z is 0 0.88, what did you see? What value did you see? So, correct. The area is 0 0.3106. Very good. So, notice that in the distribution, 0 0.5 is already shaded. So, we have to perform the process of addition. So, that is 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3106. <clears throat> and so the probability that X is less than 52 is 0 0.8106. So therefore, the probability that the sample average we obtain will be less than 52 hours of watching um, television is 0 0.8106 or 81.06%. Let's talk about activity B on page 75 of your SIPA. So a survey has found out that a family generates an average of 17.2 pounds of garbage per week. That's a, a lot of garbage. Assume that the standard deviation of the distribution is 2.5 pounds. Find the probability that the mean of a sample of 55 families will be between 17 and 18 pounds. So to answer that, we have two values for x for the given. We have mu is equal to 17.2 pounds. The population standard deviation is 2.5 pounds. Our sample size n is 55. Again, this is a large sample. Our first x raw score is 17. And we have a second raw score. That's 18. So therefore, we have two vertical lines here. So when we plot it on the normal curve, this is how it looks like. So we get the center, that is mu is 17.2. Our first vertical line is 17. And our second vertical line is 18. So notice that we will shade that 
those parts. So obviously, the perform operation there will be addition. First, we get the area from 0 to um, from mu to x sub 1. But we have to find first the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means when it is infinite. Substituting the value, so we have 2.5 divided by the square root of 55. So our sigma sub x bar is 0 0.34. We convert x sub 1 to a c sub 1 score. So that will be 17 minus 17.2 divided by 0 0.34. The answer is negative 0 0.59. So obviously, our x sub 1 is located on the standard score negative 0 0.59. Let's convert the second raw score to x sub 2, and it becomes z sub 2. So we follow the same formula, 18 minus 17.2. So obviously, the answer will be positive, divided by the standard deviation sampling distribution of the sample means. So we will get 2.35. So we have two vertical lines now that represents those Z scores. And we have to find the area of negative 0 0.59 and 2.35 respectively. So kindly get your Z table. Let's start with negative 0 0.59. You should get an area of 0 0.2224. Nice. For the second one, when Z sub 2 is 2.35, if you get an area which is 0 0.4906, then you are looking on the Z table correctly. Did you see them? Great. So again, as I've told you, it is obvious that we will add the probabilities. So from 0 to X sub 1 and from 0 to X sub 2. So that is 0 0.2224 plus 0 0.4906. Look at how we um, write the probability notation. The probability that x lies between 17 and 18, or x is greater than 17 or less than 18. And so the sum is 0 0.713. So therefore, the probability that the sample average we obtain will be between 17 and 18 pounds is 71.30%. So that ends our discussion on the applications of the central limit theorem. So we will see you on week number seven for the interval estimate of a population. So again, this is Sir Peter, your statistics and probability teacher.